Indiana Dunes National Park is one of the country's newest national parks and it was dedicated in 2019. The park's around 15,000 acres, making it relatively small, but it protects 20 miles of pristine coastline on Lake Michigan. It's one of those parks you may not get at first, but as you explore more you'll probably really enjoy it like I did. The park is fascinating with lots of dunes, interesting history, and great views across the water of the Chicago skyline. I didn't get a great day when I visited in October, but I hope to go back and explore more in the future. Let me know if you have a favorite spot that I left off and let's jump into my one day in Indiana Dunes National Park. To get to the visitor center and the start of the national park, it's about a 45 minute drive from Chicago. As you can see, it's not a pleasant October day in Indiana Dunes National Park. We're gonna make the most of it and see as much as we can. The visitor center isn't that big, but it does have a few interesting exhibits with things that children can see that will tell you more about the animals and the plant life. I found the exhibit about the gliders used here in the 1800s and how it influenced the Wright brothers to be the most interesting. After grabbing my map, I left to get to my first spot in Indiana Dunes in the pouring rain. The park's broken down into multiple sections with different industrial buildings and even houses in between. We started in the middle and then headed east before going back to the west to finish the day. Our first stop brought us to the Beverly Shores area of the park. This area is well known for its Century of Progress Historic District. There's only parking for about a dozen cars along the houses and they're designated for 15 minutes only. No one was parked there when I came in the rain but I imagine it can get pretty busy. Once you park you can walk and see the houses but note that they're each private residences. These buildings were built for the 1933 Chicago World's Fair and they were actually bought and shipped over on a barge to get here. These buildings were designed to show the future of housing in the 1930s and it's fascinating to see what they thought the future would look like. It is pretty crazy to see how different these houses actually do look. Since each of them is a private residence, you can't get too close to them, but the National Park Service does offer a tour once per year. You can read more about that on the National Park website and buy tickets there if you're interested. As you leave the houses and are driving along Lakefront Drive, this is one of the best areas to be able to pull off and take one of the trails down to the water. The trails here are short and there's a few places that have parking lots with the easiest being Lakeview. This actually seems like a pretty cool park, but uh, not today. I walked down the sand at Lakeview and enjoyed the views over the coast, but I kept getting water on my camera lens and my umbrella kept folding in on itself. I always forget to bring a good umbrella as I never have one when I'm in California and the one I bought at CVS in Illinois was not very good. This is definitely not the best way to visit the park, but sometimes you're only in the area for a short period of time. So I got to see it at least. I'm going to see some more, of course, but hopefully I can come back and really experience it later. As you finish Lakefront Drive, there's still a few more areas you can pull out and walk down to the sand if you'd like. For me though, I headed to the most eastern part of the park at Mount Baldy. Mount Baldy is set apart because it's the largest living dune in the park, which means that it's still moving. It moves at about 4 feet per year, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. As it moves, it basically buries everything that's in front of it, including trails and even trees. This is where you can access the trail to the summit of Mount Baldy, but you can only do that with a ranger. So we are continuing on to the beach. It only takes about 15 minutes to walk out to the beach, and once you get there you have amazing views of the dunes and down towards the sand. Plus, it's pretty crazy to see the industrial buildings which are out on the end of the sand in the distance in front of you. I found this area to be pretty cool as it was very desolate when I was there but the views were unique. Note that the walk down to the beach is a little bit steep so it can be tough on the way up depending on how used to sand you are. After leaving Mount Baldy, I drove about 15 minutes west to the Bailey Homestead. We still got the wind, but luckily the rain stopped for the moment. Checking out a homestead and then heading over to a few more spots in the West Beach area. The homestead is one that Joseph Bailey lived in and began building in the 1830s. It's right along the water which was a popular fur trading route in the 1800s. A few of his descendants lived here until the early 1900s and the National Park Service took it over in 1971. At one point in time there were eight buildings and the house here. Overall, it's a great quick stop if you want to learn about the area's history. Apparently there's a whole bunch of launch sites where you can go into the river and actually paddle through some of these areas and we're right here. It's pretty awesome to think about doing a paddling trip on this river. 
The water seemed pretty low when I was there, but let me know if you've ever done this before as I'd love to come back and try this out myself. As you leave the homestead and head west, you'll immediately notice the industry that competes with the Indiana Dunes National Park for land. It's crazy to see that the park can survive so well being surrounded by these massive steel plants. And it's an interesting juxtaposition of the nature and human element of the park. You'll drive past one of the largest plants as you make your way to my next stop which is the Portage Lakefront and Riverwalk. Here you can walk along the river, go out on the jetty, or see the visitor center. At the visitor center the rangers had an eastern milk snake which lives in the area and I got to interact with it which was pretty cool. The rangers here were absolutely awesome and they let me pet the snake and told me about some of the other wildlife that lives in the park. Unfortunately the wind was crazy so I didn't spend a lot of time here but it was definitely a cool spot. I had hoped to walk out on the jetty but when I saw the waves crashing over it I decided it probably wasn't a good day for that. The ranger inside told me it's 30 mile an hour winds right now. I was excited that the rain was gone, but I don't think it matters. It's still freezing cold. So uh, one more stop and then we're ending the video. On the way to my last hike, I stopped at the Tolson Dunes Marsh Overlook. Also, if you come in the summer or fall, note that the ranger told me there's a lot of ticks in the park. They recommended that you wear long pants and that you check for them after you go on a hike. This overlook hike was less than a tenth of a mile on an elevated boardwalk. Apparently there are dunes in front of me, but it doesn't look anything like this picture right now. I would not think that there was a dune out there, but apparently there is. It was pretty sparse when I was there and the leaves had already fallen off of the oak trees, so there wasn't much to look at, but it was a quick stop. Here we are at West Beach, which is one of the most popular places in the park. No one's here. It's going to be freezing, but we're going to finish our time with this trail. The West Beach Trail is the one I was looking forward to the most as it has an elevated boardwalk that goes up and over a sand dune. Supposedly it has some of the best views in the park as well. Nothing more fun than hiking in sand, but we're about to do stairs. The trail is not particularly difficult if you take your time, but you do have to climb up and then down over 270 stairs. I hate hiking up sand dunes because of how tough it is in the sand, but they put stairs on all of them. I wouldn't complain as much. The stairs make the hike really nice and you get great views quickly as you ascend. It is so cold. Once you get to the top of the stairs, there's two small benches and views out across the water towards Chicago. Here you can also learn about Diana of the Dunes, a woman named Alice Gray who lived out here and was responsible for protecting the dunes in the early 1900s when real estate development was encroaching. After reaching the top right there, we are immediately going back down. The path went down from here through a small forest and then made its way back out to the other side where you got some of the best views on the trail. This is a really cool trail. Look at the stairs leading down all the way to the beach and then Chicago in the background. When I was researching this park before I went, I had always seen these photos of the skyline of Chicago across the water and I was really hoping that I was gonna be able to see them on my visit. After all the rain and the wind, I figured that I wasn't gonna be able to, but when I came across and saw it, I was really excited. Plus the boardwalk itself as it made its way down the sand towards the beach was an awesome spot for photography as well. Eventually the path goes back down into the trees and then the boardwalk ends. Oh no, we're leaving the awesome cement and stairs and we are back on the sand. As I got back down to the water the wind started picking up again and of course I was the only person dumb enough to be out here on this day. Without the rain, I was able to enjoy it a lot more and get some great views out over the water and the sandy beaches. We made it to the beach! If you can even hear me at all! <laughs> As I walked along the beach, I could see a lot of what makes this park so polarizing. In one direction, it was beautiful nature. In another direction, it was the water and the skyline of Chicago. And in a third, it was all of the massive buildings for the steel production plants. I didn't stay long as it was freezing cold, but it was hard to pull myself away from some of these views. 
Plus, being able to see the dunes I had just climbed over was another awesome part of the experience. I'm so glad to be back in the car where it's warm. It was freezing out there. That was actually a really great day in Indiana Dunes National Park. I wish I would have been able to do more stuff, but the weather kind of stopped what I wanted to do. Let me know what your favorite spot is in the comments, and we will see you on the next video.